Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, before, inshallah, the adhan, I wanted to share a quick reflection and a quick announcement, inshallah. Um, as you know, many of us, alhamdulillah, we come from different countries, different uh, immigrant backgrounds. And one of the attitudes and the mindsets that results is that I'm not from this country, this country is not mine. That I'm from India, I'm from Pakistan, I'm from Uzbekistan, I'm from Palestine, from Yemen, anywhere else. And we cop out, we, we leave the responsibility that we're from here, that we live here, and that we have to improve life for people here in order to improve life for people in our home countries. If we look at what's going on in Palestine, sometimes we realize that it's actually because of our lack of engagement here that is causing the harm to the people in Palestine there. That this is one of the consequences of our lack of political engagement, is that the tragedies that is happening, why do we hold so many fundraisers after the tragedy occurs instead of doing the work before it happens, instead of being politically engaged before it happens? This is one of our biggest mistakes and this is something that we need to fix inshallah. Is that yes, we may be from so many different countries but we live here, we are raising families here, we are working here, so we need to be engaged here in order to fix the life for Muslims here, to protect our community here, but to also protect the ummah abroad inshallah. That is one reflection I wanted to share, inshallah. It's very important. So as a, as a result, alhamdulillah, we've collaborated with uh, CARE Cleveland and Northern Ohio chapter to organize multiple voter registration drives. And today is, is one that we're having, inshallah, after the khutbah. Please use this opportunity to get registered to vote. If you, even if you're 17 and you haven't turned 18 yet, you can still register if you turn 18 before November. And if you are working here, you're living here, you have the opportunity to vote, please do. It is not limited to just the president, uh, presidential elections. There are so many more levels to being politically active. Please use this opportunity to learn in order to correct our mistakes and to, inshallah, forge a better community here and abroad, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمدك يا مولانا حمدا كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده ربي لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا واستاذنا ومعلمنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله الطاهرين وصحابته الميامين وعلى كل من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أصيكم ونفسي المقصرة أولاً بتقوى الله سبحانه فإن من اتقاه وقاه ومن سأله أعطاه ومن توكل عليه كفاه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون جعلني الله وإياكم من عباده المتقين الفائزين الذاكرين آمين اللهم آمين all you who believe, do not let death approach you, except in the state of taqwa, the state of piety and righteousness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those whom live and die upon Islam, iman and taqwa. Ameen, Allahumma, ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam beautifully mentions Al-Mu'minu al-Qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if that a strong believer is greater in the sight of Allah than a weak believer. A strong believer, not only physical strength, spiritual strength, mental strength, within one's profession, within the workforce, mastering whatever you are doing, being unique in our efforts, engaging with ihsan is considered to be strength. That a stronger believer that is more effective, more engaging, more giving, is greater in the sight of Allah than a weaker believer. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many different ahadith speaks about what allows a believer to be a strong believer. But it stems from within. It begins internally. And then it is demonstrated through one's actions. He beautifully mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by, by saying, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ أَقْوَى النَّاسِ Whomsoever desires to be the strongest of people, that he or she are able to live their day-to-day -day lives with so much strength, they are capable of engaging. They are motivated to overcome the obstacles. Individuals that have clear goals, very clear goals and seek those goals and work towards them day after day, regardless of the challenges. Man sallahu an yakuna aqwa nas. This individual that wants to be the greatest and the strongest of people is trying to break down walls. Every morning people may wake up and find obstacles in achieving what they're trying to achieve. And if someone wakes up just living with ease, not realizing that there are challenges in one's school, one's work, one's business, in one's marriage, one's family, then he or she are living a dream. There are constant challenges that a person is experiencing day to day. He says, whomsoever wants to be the strongest of people, Allah. He or she must have reliance on Allah. As if he is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is almost impossible to conquer and to overcome all of these challenges if this heart has not submitted to Allah. Us as Muslims, we gain strength through our sujood. When we make sujood, this is a state of humility. You are humbling yourself for the sake of Allah. When you bow down to Allah, you are demonstrating istislam, taslim. One's putting themselves down for Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana idha hazabahu amr, laja ila salah. When the Prophet ﷺ would experience a difficulty, he would immediately find himself in salah. This is where a believer begins his strength. It's not external. It's not one's spouse. It's not one's career. It's not one's job. All of those are external affairs. But if internally a person is weak, then everything else will fall apart. Why as Muslims we pray five times a day? It's not about praying in the morning and just praying all five all at once and alhamdulillah fulfilled these obligations. There are set times where a person is asked to pause and to reflect and to call upon Allah and to put themselves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doors and prostrate in Allah's presence. This is tawakkul. I have a restart button every single day, five times a day. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It all begins internally. And subhanAllah, what this does to a believer is that he or she live as free people. You and I cannot be imprisoned by people. Many people are imprisoned to their addictions. They cannot wake up unless they look at their phone. Why? Because they are internally deprived. Some people cannot feel any sense of contentment. They have everything, but as if they have nothing. So they have nothing because internally empty internally empty and subhanallah what tawakkul does it doesn't mean jazallah khair yasin was talking about political engagement it doesn't mean that you no longer engage it doesn't mean that you and i fall asleep tawakkul is only allowing allah to occupy your heart that's tawakkul the means remain the means 
within your capacity, within your, within your hold, you have full authority to take, take it in or take it out. But when it comes to Allah, it is only Allah that occupies the heart. And this is why Ibn al-Qayyim alayhi rahmatullah, he says, إِنَّ الْقَلْبَ كَعْبَةِ إِنَّ الْقَلْبَ كَعْبَةِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ كَرِهَ الْأَصْنَامَ فِيهَا That this heart is considered to be a Kaaba, Mecca, al Kaaba, that cubicle structure, and Allah dislikes idols in the Kaaba. Allah cannot have any parties, any people, anyone that occupies your heart except Allah. What that means is that when a difficulty hits me and befalls me, I find myself on the prayer rug before I make a call. We all have connections, we all can call people. But it's about refraining from engaging in that immediately and calling upon Allah first. And this is why some of the ulama are very strict about the cultural saying where people say, Al-Baqi ala Allah. Salam, Mush al-Baqi ala Allah. Awalan wa khiran ala Allah. When they say the rest is on Allah, is in Allah's hands. They go against that term, they go against that line. And it's a cultural line that we all use, including ourselves. We say, Al-Baqi ala Allah. They say, no, it begins with Allah and it ends with Allah and you and I are in the middle engaging and seeking. Al-Hassan al-Basri alayhi rahmatullah was asked that what led to such freedom? We feel that as you engage with people, you are just free. You're not imprisoned by your thoughts, you're not imprisoned by status, you're not imprisoned by the community, you're not imprisoned by temptations, you're not imprisoned by people's perception of you and I. What led to such freedom? Al-Hassan al-Basri beautifully mentions when he talks about tawakkul. He says, alayhi rahmatullah, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ رِزْقِي لَا يَأْخُذُهُ غَيْرِي فَطْمَأَنَّ قَلْبِي I navigate in this world realizing that my sustenance will not be taken by anyone else. So my heart fell at ease. It doesn't mean that his body was at ease. Because we are asked to move as Muslims. فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ We are asked to move all the time. As Muslims, we are always asked to increase whatever it is. Because the greater we become, the more helpful, the more useful we become as a community. So he says, I have realized that sustenance is all from Allah. So my heart fell at ease. I am not consumed by it. Some people, what you and I have today is a dua that is made somewhere else. And we still lack contentment. You know how many people are making dua just to be able to drive safely, to sit safely? to sit in a beautiful place, to go back home, to go to work, to feed your family. You are someone's Jannah. You are someone's Jannah. And we still find ourselves struggling internally. He says, I realize that everything is in the hands of Allah. So my heart became at ease. قَالَ وَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّ عَمَلِي لَا يَعْمَلُهُ غَيْرِ فَانْشَغَلْتُ بِهِ I've realized that no one will engage and do my part, my actions. So I've decided to distract myself by engaging with myself and perfecting my craft and becoming a better Muslim. Why are people consumed by others? Because they've lost touch with themselves. How many people that you may ask, what do you think about this person, that person, this person? They say, oh, this person is this, that person is this. Okay, what do you think about yourself? When we do marital counseling, one of the questions that I ask people, say three bad things about yourself. And people stutter. People stutter. Why? Because people have been so consumed about others that they've neglected themselves. And this is where muhasaba comes in. It's about engaging with my ruh, with my spirituality, and improving myself every single day. Al-muhasaba laysat muhasabatul akhirina wa innama muhasabatul nafs. When we talk about the concept of holding ourselves accountable, it's about self-reflecting. It has never been about others. And this is why the ulama would always say, مَنْ اشْتَغَلَ بِالنَّاسِ شُغِلَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ Whomsoever engages and is occupied by people, they've neglected themselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those whom are mindful. قَالَ وَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّ الْمَوْتَ سَهْمٌ قَدْ أُرْسِلْ فَعْدَتُ الزَّادَ لَهِ And I've realized that death is an arrow that has been set free. And I know that it will hit me soon. And my responsibility is to prepare provisions for that day. This is why in Islam, when we talk about death, it's not about placing fear in people's hearts. It's about maximizing on your day. 
You and I don't wait till tomorrow to please our parents. We don't wait till tomorrow to overcome our addictions. We don't wait till tomorrow to seek an apology and to seek forgiveness and to repent to Allah. Everything is done today. That mindset can only happen if one believes that today may be their last day. And then he says, وَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ مُطَّلِعٌ عَلَيَّ فَاسْتَحْيَيْتُ مِنْ This is tawakkul. Tawakkul has never been, oh, I'm in, I'm in the hands of Allah. Tawakkul is a lifestyle. And this is why tawakkul is hard. He says, I realized that Allah is all observant. So I became afraid to engage in sin in secret. How can someone claim to have tawakkul and the moment they find themselves alone with Allah, they begin to engage in wrong. This is why sinning in secret is far more destructive. Because a person is completely negligent of Allah's observance. When the Prophet ﷺ spoke about a person that stands with bankruptcy, with nothing on the day of Qiyamah, These are people that the moment they found themselves alone, they begin to engage in sin. So how can someone say, I have trust in Allah, but they sin in secret? Again, it contradicts أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله ولكم استغفروا فيا فوزا الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطاهرين وبعد توكل إن الله my dear brothers and sisters as we mentioned is a mindset it's how you and I process our thoughts how do we engage with Allah? And this is why tawakkul is so important. It's not about when I have a flat tire, I say, Bismillah, tawakkal ta'ala Allah. Or when I'm driving, Bismillah, tawakkal. It's, it's a lifestyle that allows this to be connected to Allah. And those who master this ibadah enter Jannah with no reckoning. Can you imagine they enter Jannah with no hisab? Why? Because the heart was always attached. And Allah constantly reminded Rasulullah in the Qur'an, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whomsoever has reliance on Allah, what's your gift? You may think, okay, you get 10 hasanat. You get 20? You enter Jannah? You gain forgiveness? What is it? Allah is your gift. Allah is the gift. Is there any better gift that a person wants in their life than knowing that Allah is the gift? فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah is the gift and Allah is sufficient. And Allah reminds the Prophet, Abda. Isn't Allah sufficient? You think that this person that you're trying to rely on, full reliance on, even people that come, they say, I wanted my partner to make me happy. Why rely on someone? Why be enslaved by someone? Why humiliate oneself for someone else? It is only done for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't Allah sufficient? Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just imagine Rasulullah at night. Before he would go to sleep, he would say this dua. And this just shows you and I how in the most difficult times, there was tawakkul. Tawakkul, brothers and sisters, is not you seeing the results. It's knowing that Allah knows best. وَالْفَرْقُ مَا بَيْنَ التَّسْلِيمِ وَالتَّفْوِيضِ أَنَّ التَّسْلِيمِ يَرْضَى بِعِلْمِ اللَّهِ أَمَّا التَّفْوِيضِ فَيَكْفْرَحُ بِحِكْمَةِ اللَّهِ يَفْرَحُ بِحِكْمَةِ اللَّهِ Taslim is you submitting to Allah's knowledge. Allah knows best. Tafweel is I am completely submissive and excited to Allah's wisdom. Whatever Allah wills, I'm okay. Allah knows best. That's tafweel. Even with what's happening in Gaza, we may not understand. If you try to convince anyone here that no, no, it's, it's hard to process. Everything that is happening, the bloodshed, the destructiveness of what's happening. But we have trust in Allah. We have trust in Allah that Allah knows best. Are we more merciful, O oh Allah? Does Allah work within our timelines? When people say, I made dua to pass a test and I failed. Is Allah just there as a tool to answer a dua? And to be there for you at that one time? And we neglect a life cycle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering our duas. And even the giving that we received through no du'as. Imagine if right now, just think for a moment, when we're talking about Allah has given us more than what we deserve. 
Imagine right now, you sitting down, that Allah will take away from you today what you did not ask Him for yesterday or uh, thanked Him for yesterday. Imagine if Allah took today what you did not thank Him for yesterday, what would be left? Did you thank Allah for your sight today? Did you thank Allah for your heart today? Your body today? Your legs today? And everything was identified? No. But we just say, Alhamdulillah. But that's tawakkul Allah continues to give us. He would say before he goes to sleep, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is a dua. Someone that does this won't immediately engage in haram and look to their phones. Because the heart is connected. He said, Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayk. Wa fawwadtu amri ilayk. Wa aljatu dhahri ilayk. لا ملجا ولا منجا منك إلا إليك. إذا أتى مضجع. He would say, Oh Allah, I have submitted myself to you. I've placed my affairs in your hands. I've leaned upon you. Ya Allah, I need you. There is no one to run to but you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two points I advise myself and everyone here, my dear brothers and sisters. Tawakkul in Allah comes mainly through two points. And we train ourselves, not something that we'll just wake up having. Number one, you and I cannot rely on someone we don't know. We just can't. And this is why the number one way to have tawakkul is know who Allah is. And this is why Allah would say, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا Go around the land and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. When you and I know Allah's names and attributes, when doors are closed, we say, يَا فَتَّاح when we are seeking His mercy, we say, Ya Rahman. When we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to speak at a time where we may stutter or find it difficult, Ya Mubin, whatever it is, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clarify these hearts through calling upon Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, is always having good assumptions in Allah. Wallahi, sometimes we rely on one another more than our reliance on Allah. Imagine if you just had a friend and you stood back like this and you told them that game where people just drop down. You just drop down, it's okay. Like, no, 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 I, I can't. Like, no, it's okay. Sometimes we take that personal. Like, wallah, I got you. It's not a problem. We take that personal. And it's just a drop. Imagine people that don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husnul dhanni billah. La yamutanna ahadukum illa wa huwa yuhsinul dhanna billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have good assumptions in Allah. We think positively about Allah. It is one's negative assumptions in Allah that leads to their destruction. It is one's negative assumptions in Allah that led to their failure, but it was never Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom engage with tawakkul, those whom are mindful of His presence, those whom think positively about their Creator. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring ease to this journey to allow our hearts to not be uh, in, in, in humility or show uh, uh, submission only to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those whom stand in the presence of Allah on the day of Qiyamah in the groups of the mutawakkilun. Ameen, Allahumma ameen, ameen, Allahumma ameen. Ala wa sallu wa sallimu ala man ba'athahu Allah rahmatan lil alameen. حيث أمرتم بالصلاة والسلام عليه فقال عز من قائل إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم فصلي وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابة الأخيار وعلى كل من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم كن مع إخواننا في غزة وفي فلسطين اللهم انصرهم على القوم الظالمين الغاصبين المعتدين فإنهم لا يعجزونك يا قوي ويا متين اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وقوموا إلى صلاة مرحمكم الله وأقيم الصلاة